Welcome to In The Shop, a video series that aims to help CNC machine operators overcome challenges routinely encountered on the shop floor. I'm your host, Kevis Mitchell. In the last episode of In The Shop, we focus on wheel basics for tool grinding. If you haven't seen that episode yet, you gotta check it out. Today, we're going to explore another critical and foundational requirement for successful tool and cutter grinding, work holding. Improperly set up and maintained work holdings are one of the leading causes behind the production of bad tools, resulting in increased scrap rates, unhappy customers, and lost money for your business. In this episode of In The Shop, we'll discuss three main types of work holdings for tool grinding, when you should use them, the pros and cons of each style, and we'll look at the best practices for installation, changing, and maintenance, helping to ensure your tool making process will deliver the best results. We're here in our solution center with one of our amazing engineers, Chad Mehurin. Chad, what are you gonna show us today? Well, Kivas, today we're gonna to talk about different types of work holding that we use in tool grinding. So, we're gonna go over the different styles that we can use. We're gonna go over how we install them, the pros and cons, things that we need to look for, you know, just in cleanliness, you know, making sure we have good work holding. So someone has actually ran a wheel into this collet and is actually ground into it. Now, so with this collet, do you notice anything? Well, Chad, I'm looking at it and I don't see anything that could be visibly wrong with this collet. So with this collet, we know because we was running some jobs in the shop and what we found is even though there's no visible wear or we can't really see anything wrong with it, we was getting bad run out with that collet. On like these type of collets for automated or for the highest precision, you never clamp the tool, or the clamp the collet without a tool in them. You always want to clamp on the tool this way because if you don't and you clamp without nothing, you're going to deform the collet because it's letting, allowing it to over clamp. And it changes, so now you, you may not get the same repeatability, you know, once you change the, the structure of that collet like that. And you also mentioned runout. What does that runout have to do with the collets? Well, runout is what we try to achieve is, you know, we want the best concentricity. So you'll hear people call it concentricity, you'll hear people call it runout. <clears throat> what we're trying to do is you're trying to run the best concentricity to center of the part. So this way you get a good tool that you cut equally apart. So what kind of tool holder are you going to show me today? Here is a manual chuck, okay? So I just grabbed one of the manual chucks that we have. They kept, there are different variations of them. But a uh, manual chuck here has a collet series that, that goes with it. And this is what we're going to start with today. So what's the benefits of using a manual chuck over any other types? And what are the pros and cons of this type of chuck? Well, so like say for this system with the manual chuck, if I'm running small batches of tools, two, three pieces, and I'm changing sizes, and I'm changing sizes, that's where a manual chuck comes in real nice. I'm doing a hand load operation, so I'm loading parts. I can also come in here, I can also put a stop in the bottom if I want to set from the bottom. That's another option that I can have. Uh, but it's just a quick ch change over. If I need to change sizes, I take the cap off, I take change the collet out, put it back on. And since it's a self-centering system because it's on the 50 taper, the way it's made, I don't have to dial in each time I change sizes. So Chad, what does the installation look like for this tool holder? The first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put our clamping berg in. So I'm gonna take my Allen wrench and we'll use it. I'm gonna insert the clamping berg and push it all the way to the back. And then I'm gonna tighten it up and I'll get where it's just snug. The next thing is before I put my holder in, I'm gonna take the thorn and I'm gonna clean the inside of the A-axis because I wanna make sure that there's no debris, that it's a clean surface inside. I don't want no influence from anything. So I can use the thorn and I'll just rotate it in the A-axis to clean it. And now I can take my holder and then I just wanna make sure that I'll clean off my 50 taper. I just wanna make sure there's no debris you know, I want to inspect it. I want to make sure that there's no, you know, burrs, any of that type of stuff on there. So I want to make sure it's just nice and clean. Now I can take my holder, load my holder. I'll just hit, clamp it and it's installed. So what's the next type of tool holder we're going to look at, Chad? 
Well, keep us, the next type we're gonna look at is an automated chuck. There's different types that we use that's available. Uh, we use these for when we're gonna be, you know, running automation. Uh, so we have a loader gonna load parts into it. Well, what does the installation for this tool holder look like? Well, let me go over, I'll show you how, how we do this one. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to remove the Berg that we just put in here for the manual. So I'm gonna remove it. So I'll just unscrew it, take it out. Now, with this one here, so it's really a three-piece system. I have, my, I have the draw tube, I have the nose cone, and then I also have the collar, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna install is I'm gonna install the draw tube. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put this in the A axis and there's a clamping cylinder to back that it'll thread into. So I'm gonna tighten this all the way up to the point to where it becomes snug. So I don't wanna over tighten because I don't wanna influence run out through the draw tube. The other thing is we do when we put these in, we wanna make sure that our parts are clean. We don't want any debris on our parts. So you know, I'm gonna take a shop towel and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wipe them off, but while I'm wiping them off, I'm also visually inspecting them to make sure that there's no burrs, that you know all the debris's gone because I don't want any problems for, you know, when I'm putting this on. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna take the chuck and I'm gonna screw the collet into the draw tube and I'm gonna spin this up close to being tight. And once I get this in here, I'm gonna take a, a blank the size of my collet. I'm gonna place it in my draw tube because like we talked earlier about springing the collet, we don't wanna over tighten the collet past the point. So this is how we know how far to go up. So now I have this tight, I can't move my blank. So then I'm gonna back this off a quarter turn, okay? So now that we have that in there, I can take this and I can tighten this so I'm just gonna snug, I'm just gonna snug these up. So I'll come in here and I'll place this in position here. And it doesn't have to be exact, but this way now at least when I'm I'm indicating I'm on the high point high point of it. So you're gonna spin the A-axis and the indicator is gonna travel around the, the blank to make sure that it's there's no run out? Well, there will be when I first put it on, but I need to go and I need to dial it in. So I'm gonna just come around and I'm gonna start tapping it in. So what would be your optimal reading when you're doing this? Well, zero would be what everybody would love to achieve, but zero is a little tougher to, I mean, you can usually get within one or two microns and that's, that's a very tight tolerance that we have. So I got it in a pretty good spot, in a pretty good position right now. So I'm just gonna snug my bolts a little bit more. So that's, when I start tightening them, a lot of times I'll go and I'll just tighten a certain amount and then a little bit, and then I'll tighten the opposite, the opposite side, okay? You just need to take your time and do the best job that you can. And the thing is, is the more you do it, the faster, the faster you can run this and dial all this in. So Chad, after you get the, the blank dialed in, what's the next step? Well, once I have this dialed in here, which I almost have, okay, so it's tight. So like right now, I'm dialed in within one micron. So that's, that's very acceptable. Okay. So, you know, this is where, you know, when I go to mount this one, now I know that, hey, I have good centrality with my nose cone. So you're just verifying the position of the nose cone. So you can use, using that blank allows you to put any tool in and you know that it's centered properly. Yes, on that, si on that size tool. What are the pros of using this system? Okay, if I have automation, like this machine has a loader on it, I would run this type of, of collet system because now I can run large batches that, you know, I can get this running. It's, now it's automatically loading parts, putting them in, taking them out that the operator here can go run a different machine. Uh, maybe it's over the weekend and we're gonna, run, we're gonna run some parts on here through Saturday or something. 
It's, a, it's just, it, it helps because with automation these days, if I have a loading system, now I'm able to, to go and just run parts. So what are the, what are the negatives or the cons for this type of system? Uh, so, you know, like the cons for this one is, if I was gonna do short run things where I maybe only have a few pieces of a size and then I gotta change over, well, you've seen the difference what it took me to dial this one because now I had to change out a collet, I had to change, you know, redial it in, make sure everything's correct. So you're saying the advantages for this system would be the ability to use large batches and to walk away from the machine while it's running and not have to worry about changing pieces out because you've dialed it in yes. versus smaller batches which you'd have to use with a different style of collet, more of a manual type. Yeah, because now you're gonna have some, because if, if, if I'm manual, if I'm hand loading, you have somebody in front of the machine the whole time. So Chad, what's the next type of tool holder we're gonna look at? Well, Kivas, the last one we're gonna look at is a high precision tool holder. <clears throat> the one I have here to, today, as we noticed, it's like our manual chuck that we had. Right. So it has a 50 taper, so it means it's self-centering. Uh, these also come in varieties of a bolt-on, just like our automatic chuck. But these are the ones that we, that this, this is the one that we're gonna talk about today. So when would a machine operator normally use this type of tool holder? So the high precision chucks, what they're really good about is, just like in the name, it'll give us very good run out. It'll give us run out within a couple of microns. So Simon, how big is a micron? That's a great question, Kivis. So let me explain quickly using this diagram. So a human hair, is around 80 microns. A particle of dust is around 40 microns. If we go down to like a white blood cell, that's a 20 micron size. Talcum powder, 10 microns. Red blood cells, we're down to five microns and bacteria comes in at around three microns. So a micron itself is very, very small, as we can see. In the cutting tool world, we're typically grinding tools to around five microns tolerance for most high-end cutting tools. Back to you, Kivis. So Chad, what else you want to show me? With these, you know, it's just like our manual. You know, they're really simple to install because, you know, they're self-centering. The only thing we got to do is we got to put our clamping burg in and then we're going to go through the same scenario because, you know, back like we've been talking, it's cleanliness. Right. You know, we need to make sure there's no burrs, I have no, you know, no debris on my taper. I need to clean out the A-axis also. But with these, it's very simple. So we're going to take the burg and we're going to put it into the A-axis. And then with this one, then we're going to screw it all the way in and then you know, and like we've been talking, we've been talking cleanliness, so I need to clean the A-axis. So I'm gonna use our thorn, and I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna clean the A-axis. So what are the positives for using this type of system? If I'm very critical on the, the concentricity or run out of the tool, you know, this is a high precision chuck. It really gives me that very tight tolerance. It holds the tool very straight, you know. So one of the other things that I wanna do here is when I, before I put this in, I always want to look, look at my, because I just cleaned the A axis out with the thorn. Now I want to make sure, and I'm going to clean off my taper, make sure there's no debris, because I don't want to, to add things to, to build for my run out. So you gave me the positive. What are the negatives for using this type of system? Just like the automatic clamping system, one of the holdbacks of this one is, is all my parts have to have on-size collets. There is, no, it's not like the manual system where I have an expanded range for one collet. So depending on what size of tool I'm using, I may have to have multiple different collets specific to that size. Really, so it's in now. I mean, it's, it's just ready to run because it's gonna hold it super straight because of what type of work holding it is. It uses the 50 taper when it's clamped in there so everything's aligned to center. So really you're ready to run with this holding system now. So Chad, it's clear that cleanliness is a very important part of work holding and chucks. Can you talk a little bit about the best practices of, of maintaining the chucks and how you would take care of them? Well, you know, with your chucks and things, what you really need to do is, is when I get done running, running them, you know, where am I going to store them at? 
You know, I just don't want to throw everything in a drawer, everything piled up on one another. You know, I need to have, you know, good housekeeping, keep things, that way they're not banging against one another. You know, good practices like that. You know, I'll take them, I'll clean all the, the carbide, all those types of things off of them before I put them away. This way when I get them or the next person gets them, hey, everything's ready to go. You know, so that's really the, one of the biggest things is just, you know, be good with your stuff, put it away, make sure it's not damaging it just in your storage process. You know, so with, with all the things that we've looked at today, because, you know, we have from the manual to the automated to the precision, we're looking for, you know, these different scenarios of how we want to run, but we're always looking for good run out, you know. But sometimes based on what shop we're in, maybe we don't have all the scenarios, you know. So the one little good kicker that we have is if I'm stuck using a holding system that maybe don't, not the best run out for me, but I'm manufacturing a tool, well, I can tell it in Tool Studio and I can use run out compensation and it'll measure the part and it'll actually grind it true even though I have run out. So that's just one good thing that we have that we can get by if we have to. Thank you very much, Chad. Well, there you have it. We've gone over three different types of tool holdings, manual, precision, and automated. We've discussed how you can take care of them, how you can maintain them, and how you can store them. I want to thank you very much for joining us on this episode of In the Shop. Um, if you have any questions or any suggestions about any future episodes, please leave a, a information below or a comment below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on In the Shop.